Welcome to Bedtime Fairy Fails. I'm Kim. This story was made possible in part by the live play D&D podcast, All D20. We'll tell you a little more about them after the show. I also wanted to give a quick shout out to the live play D&D podcast, Caffeine Check. You may recognize that name from our episode, Reconnaissance is the Most Important Thing. You can find them on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Go check them out. This story comes from Trevin with credit to his amazing players. This is a story about planning out your every move, even when it's not necessary. This is... Work smarter, not harder. Once upon a time, there was a party of heroes who had been hired by a wizard named Helkin to bring back a man he had some business with. The party consisted of a half-elf ranger named Vesrin, a dwarf fighter named Belmere, Keela, the human cleric, and the extremely educated and proper human bard named Jonathan. Like I said, Helk and the wizard hired them to hunt down a man named Mr. Tolman, who was probably a petty criminal that stole something from the wrong wizard. Our heroes start asking around and quickly track the guy to a run-down bar in the sketchy part of town. Vesrin the ranger peeks in the window and reports back that Mr. Tolman is sitting inside at the bar. Time to make a plan. They begin discussing the best way to do this. Chances of this guy leaving voluntarily with them were slim to none, so they would probably need to take him by force. This would need to be a super elaborate and over-the-top plan for this to work. Keela the Cleric says, Okay, we have two exits. We can put two of us at the front and two of us at the back, and then one of us can go in and grab him. I'll grab him, says Belmere the Fighter. Vesrin scoffs and says, How are you going to sneak up on the guy? You're not even a little stealthy. I should be the one to go. What? How are you gonna grab him with your tiny little muscles? You should stay outside and guard the door. Tiny muscles? Well, what about your big feet and clanking over and half my around size. Like, burn, you can't burn, lift burn. anything. You're never gonna sneak you up couldn't on even a dead lift half guy. the grocery. Finally, Jonathan interrupts the arguing by saying, Gentlemen, please. There's no need to squabble amongst each other like this. Jonathan is right. There's a simple solution here. Yes, Viserin is stealthier, but that means we need him outside the door more. Belmere, you go in and grab him, since you'll be able to hold on to him better. Everyone in agreement? Fine. Says Viserin begrudgingly. Excellent plan. Exclaimed Belmere smugly. With that settled, it was time to move on to assigning the positions. Kilo once again, takes the lead, saying, Okay. Now as for positions, I'll cover the front door in case he runs out. Besserin, you take the back. But shouldn't I take the front? I can hide and shoot him from the bushes. Says Vesrin. Actually, I agree with Vesrin on this one. Says Belmere. No, I'll take the front so I can heal Belmere if he gets hurt in the scuffle. Aw, oh, come on. I'll be more useful here and you know it. You just want to take all the glory. Argues Vesrin. What glory? Belmere is the one grabbing him, and we're all splitting the loot. Why are you arguing with everyone? You are doing that, Vesrin. Points out Belmere. Well, it's only because you guys are making bad plans. Besides, you literally just agreed with me. Oh, yeah. Replies Belmere. You should definitely take the front. See? Fine. Says Keela as she throws up her hands in defeat. You take the front. I'll take the back. Belmere will go in and grab him. Jonathan, you go... Wait, where's Jonathan? The heroes look around and realize that Jonathan had disappeared while they were arguing. They search around a bit before one of them finally spots him through the window of the bar. 
You see, Jonathan had come up with a much better plan, a simpler plan, one with no arguing. Jonathan walks right up to Mr. Tolman and says, Excuse me, sir, are you Mr. Tolman? The man looks up suspiciously at Jonathan and says, Who wants to know? Excellent. You must come with me. Your uncle has passed and his affairs must be sorted. He left quite a lot behind, and all of it is supposed to go to you. Mr. Tolman's eyes light up at the mention of an inheritance, and he says, An inheritance, you say? Well, you've got the right guy. Lead the way. And with that, Mr. Tolman follows Jonathan outside of his own free will, wringing his hands with anticipation of the wealth he had just inherited. The other heroes, of course, surrounded and captured him as soon as he left the bar. And that's how you work smarter, not harder. The end. This story was sent in by Tim Pallas. This is a story about the importance of respecting Mother Nature. Don't pet the wild animals, or you just might end up being attacked by giant frogs. This is... Don't be a worry wart. Once upon a time, a group of heroes were wandering through a forest. They were probably headed out on a quest or looking to stop a bad guy but it's also possible they were just enjoying nature for a bit. Our nature-loving party consisted of a kobold ranger named Sulphur, Bluey, the dark elf rogue, and a dragonborn wizard named Kyle. The heroes were walking down a beautiful forest trail lined with tall trees. Off to their left, they can hear a small stream babbling. As they're walking and enjoying the scenery, they eventually come across a long line of frogs hopping across the path towards the stream. Now, as far as animals I want to pet go, frogs would be somewhere near the bottom of my list. But not for Sulphur the ranger. They're right up there at the top for her. You guys, look at these cute little frogs, says Sulphur. I'm gonna pet them. Kyle gives her a disapproving look and says... I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't touch the wildlife. Sulphur scoffs at him and says, Don't be such a worry wart. It'll be fine. It's just some little frogs. Maybe Kyle's right, Sulphur. Says Louie. Let's just go around them. You guys are being ridiculous. It's fine. Really. I'm great with animals. It's like if animal handling were a stat, mine would be super high. And with that, Sulphur hops over to the cute little line of frogs, reaches out, and begins gently petting the frogs as they hop past. A heartwarming scene. That is, until out of the forest hops two giant frogs that are clearly unhappy with Sulphur petting their offspring. She locks eyes with one of the frogs as a giant tongue shoots out at her and sticks to her legs. She tries to run, but can't move. Then her legs are jerked out from under her and she lands on her back with a thud as the frog begins drawing in its long tongue. Sulphur grabs at the ground, pulling up clumps of grass and leaving claw marks in the dirt, but it's no use. The frog is strong and quick and in a matter of seconds, Sulphur is completely swallowed by the frog. Her comrades can hear her shouting from inside the frog's stomach as they rush to attack. There's stomach acid. Oh my god, it burns. Help me. Louie yells back at her. <sighs> We're coming, you idiot. We told you to leave the damn frogs alone. Sulphur can hear the muffled sounds of battle from inside the frog as she calls back. Please, just get me out of here. Kyle and Louie are unleashing everything they've got on these frogs, trying to down them quickly before their friend is digested. Louie fires his crossbow as fast as he can and Kyle is pulling out all of his heavy hitting spells. All the while, they can still hear Sulphur's panicked and pained screams from inside the frog's belly. Guys, please hurry. It wasn't worth it. The frogs weren't that cute anyways. You're right, please get me out. You guys, I'm dying. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, 
the two heroes kill the frogs. They rush over to cut out Sulphur and she slides out in a river of blood and digestive juices. She was alive, but just barely. Kyle kneels down next to her and says, So maybe next time we won't pet the forest animals, right? Uh, right. After this incident, the entire party vowed to never associate with frogs ever again. Sulfur also developed claustrophobia, which made dungeon crawling a whole new kind of challenge. And that, kids, is what you get for trying to interact with nature. So next time you come across a wild animal that you want to pet, just remember, there's probably a bigger version nearby that just might come out and eat you. The end. Thanks for listening. If you like D&D podcasts, which clearly you do, be sure to check out one of our favorites, All D20. You can find them on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or anywhere else you listen. To submit a fail, visit our website at bedtimefairyfails.com or message me on Instagram or Facebook. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Bedtime Fairy Fails.